What's poppin' YouTube? Julian with Garden State Barbecue. And today, we're going butt over brisket. We're gonna be doing a pork butt, and I'm gonna be having it cook over the top of this brisket, something I haven't seen on YouTube yet. I know barbecue right now is a big thing. A lot of YouTubers out there, I'm gonna try and find ways to do different things. Um, we're gonna trim these uh, pieces of meat up. I'm not gonna do too much with the butt. I'm just gonna trim this brisket up. This is a choice brisket. Um, Nothing special, cheap cut, and I'm gonna see if the pork butt rendering over the top of the brisket is gonna uh, add some moisture. I'm gonna be doing a Texas style brisket. I'm gonna be injecting it with uh, beef broth, and we're gonna be cooking it on my uh, big green egg. We'll see how it goes. I don't claim to be any sort of professional. I learned everything I know from watching YouTube myself, uh, which by the way, this is gonna be my first uh, YouTube video that I'm posting for Garden State Barbecue. Um, I'm just gonna trim this brisket up. It's a, it's a 12 pound uh, brisket untrimmed. Uh, it'll probably, I'll probably get a pound or so of crap off this thing by the time I'm done with it. Uh, don't do anything special. Uh, like I said, I, I pretty much do the things that I learned uh, on YouTube myself. Um, just get a bowl, these trimmings. I usually save these trimmings and I'll probably do some ground with it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna trim this up, we're gonna inject it, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Hitting this down, like I said, we're doing a Texas style brisket, so I'm just hitting it with uh, Himalayan pink salt and uh, black pepper. That's all that's going down on the brisket. And as I said on the um, pork butt, we're going with Cosmo skewed uh, Dirty Bird and uh, his uh, Honey Killer Bee. Uh, I'll catch you guys in a little bit. All right, we're seasoning this uh, pork butt up. One thing I do see on uh, YouTube uh, a lot, uh, you know. The you know this is nothing new. You've seen this the mustard as a binder, but when we say light coat, I mean light coat. You really should barely just see that mustard on there, you know? I see a lot of guys lather it on. You have such a thick layer of mustard. It's not really, it's just a binder. It just holds your rubs up. So we're gonna go down with some, like I said, Cosmos Cube Dirty Bird. Light coat into that first. Obviously this is gonna give us our savory notes, uh, our salt and, uh, and peppers and what have you. And then we'll follow it up with the honey killer bee for our, our sweet. Another thing I do as well, um, a lot of guys don't, especially with beef, but I do. I spritz and I do use apple juice, uh, apple juice, apple cider vinegar combo. Uh, another big thing that's, um, I don't want to say signature to me, it's just a preference of mine. I don't wrap, you know, I never wrap. I, I like that really dark, crispy uh, bark. Uh, I think that's the, uh, the epitome of uh, what, what, you know, barbecue should look like. And uh, that, that the sugars in that, in that apple juice um, really make that dark bark happen. At least it seems that way for me anyway. You know what I'm saying? All right, well, this bad boy's rubbed down. I'm gonna throw it on the pit. I'll give you guys a glimpse of what the pit setup is looking like. Uh, I'll catch you outside. All right, guys, we're outside at the pit. This is my XL Big Green Egg. I'll show you guys the setup. Like I said, she's rolling. She's just coming up to temps at 200 degrees right now. So my brisket's gonna be underneath. Fat cap up, that's just the way I do it. Uh, that deflector plate is going to keep the uh, bottom side of the meat from getting, you know, too charred or anything. So we'll just run this bad boy right there. And I'm going to close this thing and I'm not going to even open the lid for about maybe four hours. And I'm going to start spritzing. Running the pit at, like I said, I'm shooting for 275. Banging.
give you a quick overview of my cooker sous wall right here. You've seen them all on YouTube. I got my pit barrel, obviously the green egg, and then I just have a, uh, a char griller duo here, uh, a charcoal grill on one side, gas grill on the other. I'm working on getting an offset, trying to convince the wife. All right guys, we're back outside at the pit. Um, we're gonna be looking at this thing for the first time together. Um, two things are gonna happen now. I'm gonna um, start monitoring uh, internal temperatures of the meat, so I'm gonna put some probes in there, and I'm probably gonna start spritzing anywhere from like uh, every half hour to an hour. Uh, let's see what this thing's looking like. Nice color, you're getting, starting to get that, uh, you know, what they call in the barbecue world, that uh, mahogany color, um, which is gonna quickly go to a, uh, a much darker color as we uh, go along here. I'm gonna probe the uh, flat of the brisket. That's what I'm gonna monitor. I'm gonna monitor the flat. The pork is obviously a lot more uh, forgiving. It can handle a lot more. So when this flat is done, that's when, uh, I mean, that pork should be right, right where it's at. So as you can see, if you can come in close here with the camera, you see that pork butt, the juices from that pork butt are dripping down on that brisket, and that's what we were trying to go for. Maybe that juice will keep it nice and moist, so I'm gonna go ahead and spritz this thing, and we'll get the uh, lid shut back down. That Cosmos Q, look at that color on that butt with that Cosmos Q uh, dirty bird and that honeybee. Nice light smoke, nothing crazy. And I've been holding pretty steady, uh, around 265, 270. Yeah, nice soaking. Shut her down, like I said, now I can monitor the tips with my ready check from inside. Looking good though. Looking real good. All right guys, we are uh, five hours in on this cook. Um, pit's holding the steady 270 right now. Food's at uh, 181. Take a look here. 181. So we're gonna let it keep rocking and rolling and we'll uh, check back in. I'll probably go out there uh, about a half hour and uh, spritz it again. Uh, we'll probably um, I'll probably see you guys again, uh, maybe at the six hour mark. We'll, we'll call that uh, halfway through the cook and uh, see where things are at, all right? All right guys, we are just at that six hour mark. Uh, dome temp is, uh, I just said about 225 and the pit, you know, great levels at about uh, 265 or so. Uh, at this point, this is where I like to uh, reapply some rub. I'm gonna reapply some rub to the butt. Um, I'm gonna hit it with the uh, the sweet rub and reestablish that coating because that fat cap that fat cap will split. And it's a big piece of meat anyway, regardless of the fact it, it can handle it. So. Just gonna hit it with some extra rub on top, let that glaze over. And let that set, and then uh, we'll be back in about a half hour or so. I don't know if you could tell, brisket, flat. Starting to get some nice color there. With that juice puddles, I don't know, I, I may or may not. Um, pour that juice out from that valley there, the flat. It's gonna prevent it from developing a nice bar, but that's where we're at. All right guys, we're now like 10 hours into this cook. This shit's looking amazing. Let me get a, let me shut on it. It's gonna be hard for you guys to see. Let me uh, shed some more light on this uh, situation. Our butt is looking incredible. Smoke's still rolling. Can you see our uh, brisket? All right, so right now our pit temp is uh, right at 275. 
and our brisket is sitting at 176 degrees. So we're getting close. A few more hours, a couple more hours, and we will be ready to pull off. You know, and I said, um, I don't wrap. No, I don't wrap during the cook, but I will wrap this uh, during the resting period. I will wrap the food. Insane. Insane. Guys, gotta love it. Shit's looking banging. See what it comes out to be like. All right, guys, we're right at the 12 hour mark, and I'm surprised that the pork butt is actually needing more time on the pit. The, the brisket is right at about 195 degrees. Um, the flat is like well over 200, so I pulled it. Um, you can see, I mean, it's not super dark, it's not super, you know, the, the bark is not super black, but you know, hey, it's a still looking, it, it looks like a good choice brisket. 12 hours, that's where we're at. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna wrap it and we're wrapping it for the rest period. We're gonna let it rest for at least an hour. So we're, how we're gonna do it. We're gonna pull out some aluminum foil. And this thing is piping hot. Let me tell you, for what it is, this is gonna be a good brisket. This is gonna be a fucking excellent brisket. That big Renee, as all of you know, holds temperature like a champion. No issues there. You know what I'm gonna do with this? I'm gonna stick this bad boy in my microwave somewhat insulated, it's gonna hold temperature. All right guys, it's time. This brisket is ready. We are pretty much at the uh, 13 hour mark. It smells insane, insane. It smells wonderful. this bad boy. Surprisingly no smoke ring, but very juicy though. Guys, again, Choice brisket. Smells incredible. The bottom got a little crispy. It's overdone. But excellent, guys. For an experimental cook, you know, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. I mean, the brisket's cooked perfectly. I mean, it's super juicy. I'm just, I'm a little surprised that I have that smoke ring on the outside here, but. Not a real pronounced smoke ring, but hmm, it tastes excellent. Some of that point meat. Look at this thing. Hot. 
hot, extremely hot. The taste is there. The texture is not perfect, but the taste is there. Here's my opinion. Choice brisket, the pork butt had really no bearing on uh, the tenderness of the meat. And contradictory to what normally happens, the flat seemed to have cooked faster than the point. Uh, the point meat is a little bit uh, tougher. Um, the flat is, 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 is overdone. Um, I mean, literally, uh, I mean, it's just, this whole thing's falling apart. Um, it, it, flavor's good, flavor's good. I mean, I got, I had pieces with a decent smoke ring. I mean, you can see it there uh, on this point meat. Um, you, you have some, you know, but the point is a little tough. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, the point's a little tough. Um, the, and the flat is, I mean, and, and just just fall apart. Uh, it's way overdone. Um, and, and flavor's good. <laughs> End of the story. The, the the pork fat had no bearing on the tenderness of the, the brisket. Um, at the end of the day, prime beef is where it's at, and, and that's where you're gonna get the best product. Um, I mean, it's, it looks great, um, but uh, tenderness wise, you're gonna get a better product out of uh, prime beef. Uh, I guess I'll see you guys when that pork butt comes off. Pull this thing apart. Um, I didn't quite hit the uh, internal temperature that I uh, anticipated hitting, but. It's always a good sign when that bone comes out nice and clean, chalky white. Pork butt's always in for the win. Bang him. Can't screw that up. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching guys. Please like, subscribe, and share. I'm gonna bring more videos just like this one to you. Thanks for watching. Garden State Barbecue. Banging.